Hello, f friends. We are back with a world of strange. It seems like ages, but it probably isn't. Because the timeline is really weird in this world. But yeah, um, but we're talking about um, Slender Man. But also, not uh, because it's the last show um, of the this series. Um, I asked the guests to like um, not only read out things about Slender Man, but also to share some of their weird and strange experiences they may have had in their own life, you see. So that should be rather cool. So with me is, um, in no particular order, Stuart Strauss. Hey. John Piricello. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And Jake Wardle. Oi. Oh, hi, mate. How are you doing there? All right. <laughs> okay. You know what? I silenced my phone, but not the iPad. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks things are happening already. Yeah. Damn. We're only just transmitting. Come uh, on. Yeah. Okay. I guess I could get it out of here. Well, sorry about that. You want right. to settle? <laughs> Keep rolling. So, um, yes. So, uh, Slender Man. Well, now. Um, we're going to find out a little bit about Slender Man, just to kind of set the whole pace and, and mood up for this. Because Jake is going to fill us in. Over to you, Jake, please. Right. So, the Slender Man, also known as Slender Man, is a fictional supernatural character that originated as a creepypasta internet meme created by Something Awful Forums user Eric Nudson also known as Victor Surge in 2009. It is depicted as a thin, unnaturally tall humanoid with a featureless head and a face and wearing a black suit. Stories of the Slender Man commonly feature him stalking, abducting or traumatising people, particularly children. The Slender Man is not confined to a single narrative, but appears in many dis disparate works of fiction typically composed online. Fiction relating to the Slender Man encompasses many media, including literature, art, and video series, such as Marble Hornets, wherein he is known as the operator. Outside of online fiction, the Slender Man has become an internet icon and has, impacted on popular, and has had an impact on popular culture, having been referenced in the video game Minecraft with the Enderman character, and generated video games of his own, such as Slender the Eight Pages and Slender the Arrival. He has also appeared in Always Watching, a Marble Hornet story, the film adaptation of the Marble Hornets YouTube series, where he was portrayed by Doug Jones, Dougie Jones, <laughs> uh, and will appear in an upcoming eponymous epon. How do you say that word? Eponymous film. Eponymous, I think, yeah. Film where he will be portrayed by Javier Botet. Well, now. So, yeah. I, I actually remember, I played Minecraft a little bit, and I do remember the Enderman. You do? Uh, so that's yeah. kind of like what, yeah, that's kind of how it kind of developed, I guess, from that. I think that was the first I, I heard of Slenderman. I saw the Enderman character, and then I saw people online going on about Slenderman, and I was like, why are they going on about this Minecraft thing for? But it turns out it's, uh, it predates Minecraft. So. Ah, I see. Wow. Yeah. Yes, my, my son, who uh, was an avid Minecraft player, both of my kids were, tells me that, um, that indeed Enderman was based on Slenderman. That, which was a meme at the time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that meme, yeah. Like a lot of these urban legends, you know, they're kind of like the one we were talking about before. With uh, what, what was the one we spoke about before that kind of developed like that? Um, oh lord! Oh, the Black Eyed Kids. That's it. Or was it? No, the Dog Man. Well, part. Well, no, that's been. Well, so that, that's uh, actually supposed to be around since like this nineteenth century something ah. but it, again with social media things kind of like develop more and mm -hmm. you know they just find an audience quicker than they would have done pre-internet oh yeah oh, my goodness things sure like wouldn't have trickled out so much um, um it's got they go they call them urban legends you know but now we have Stu here 
with this interesting title of White People Are Scared of Slender Man. Well, despite his obvious and completely transparent creation origins, people are legitimately afraid of Slender Man. While some kids, like the two girls in Wisconsin, decided he was cool and something to serve, others frantically posted to Yahoo Answers, Yahoo Answer Boards, uh, asking the vast gaping maw of the internet whether or not they should sleep at night because they're afraid the Slender Man is after them. Also, there's a forum on Psych Central where in 2014, People discuss their fear of Slender Man in a similar thread on the Phobics Awareness Forum. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense that people would be terrified of an internet meme that started in 2009, except it does. Slender Man has traits that echo many classic horror figures. An overwhelming singular fact of him is his obviousness, or otherness, really the otherness. He's a blank slate, allowing people to ascribe even more horrifying qualities to him. Despite his clear as day origins, his folkloric qualities allow people to build myths and legends around him to create a new narrative that perfectly plays to your audience's fears or your own. This is probably why he's amassed so many terrifying qualities, stretched to, depending on who's telling the story, encompass all the terrible qualities of Cthulhu, Michael Myers, and the aliens from Area 51, and anything else altogether ooky. Not my word, but ooky. (laughs) I've never heard of Rookie before. I've heard of Kooky, you know, with somebody hey, called well. Kooky. You say in America, Kooky, don't you? Or, I've never heard of Rookie. <laughs> yeah, like. Kooky. Kooky would kooky. work. Yeah. Okay, typo there. Typo. <laughs> it's got to be a typo. <laughs> Unless someone's invented a new Oh, one. wait a minute. Who's, who's the editor on this show? Okay. <laughs> don't shoot I the just message. read them. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so what do you think of that? Yeah, so, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's um, another one of these kind of internet kind of phenomenons um, that suddenly fed into like the public consciousness. And it reminds me of the, the, the tulpas, you know, because I think it's the tulpas where it's like something that's created um, out of them, out of a collective imagination or something, hmm. you know, oh, you, you, if, you, if it goes, if you think about it enough and go and it filters in enough, people create their own image of something. And then that's, allegedly what these things are that they 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 manifest you know know what i'm curious about i mean by 2009 how many people were surfing the internet as opposed to 10 years before it and and the fact that you know things were getting faster easier more accessible so kind of like you're saying i mean there can be a cult of anything and everything you know, so something catches your fancy, or in the case of Minecraft players that are, he had an association. Yeah. You know, if I'm saying that right, it was Minecraft, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The Enderman. Oh. See, it's well, no, 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 I think, I think the, uh, I think the, the Enderman came after Slenderman. Oh, after it. Sorry. Yeah. After it. Right. Enderman was based on Slenderman. Like yeah. the Minecraft was based on the the meme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they got when the they Mi- the Minecraft would have would have been wildly, wildly, uh, um, what's the word? A proficient or whatever at at spreading the the news because that was a hugely hugely Marvel. popular game, yeah, right? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Huge. I, like maybe it might be the biggest game. Mm. What do you think, Jake? I mean, is there a game bigger than Minecraft? I'm I'm not sure. More played than that? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Not many. But Minecraft is literally, especially because of well, it started as a, as a, a browser game, and then it became downloadable, and then now it spread to the the major consoles. Well, I mean, I, my my kids were terrified of. Enderman and Slenderman. I mean, they were, 
my daughter, I remember especially just absolutely terrified of, of, uh, and, and then when they would be playing Minecraft and all of a sudden the Endermen would show up and start just kind of heading toward them, they would scream and really, uh, Oh yeah. Even, oh, even, yeah. In, even oh, in Minecraft, yeah. the, the Enderman is, I mean, I haven't played it for years, but I remember when I popped back onto Minecraft a couple of years ago and I saw the Enderman, it was, uh, I think they released it in an update or something. It, it was definitely creepy. I mean, even even for a simple, I mean, the Minecraft is, is it's a simple game. It's made, it's got really simple, low end graphics. But, right. Um, even for a, like a li- literally pixelated block figure, it was still like they they did a good job of making it creepy. Yeah. Definitely. And they added they added sound as well. And so it's, I'm gonna have to like, find someone that has it and check it out. Sometime. Yeah, I've never I've never <laughs> actually seen it, but. Uh, um... <laughs> John, I think we use you, my good man, with uh, your uh, little your reading here. Okay. Um, which? Let me, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Which is? I'm just trying to find you. Oh yes, it's called Slender Man. Slender Man touched me, which yes. kind of seems sort of ominous, doesn't it? It does. Sort of it does. Like, uh, like, like maybe uh, being a in the whatever choir boy or something right hmm. it's like uh yeah it's it's, 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 like, it's, 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 it's a very ominous uh, title yeah yeah but uh yes yeah, so let me uh yeah let me pull over pull my car over here here we yeah. go into the shade <laughs> and uh i am ready okay so uh slender man touched me Something very strange happened to me last night, something I still can't quite understand. It was about 9.55 last night when it happened. It was about time for me to be getting to bed, so I took my 10-year-old mutt, Daisy, out for her last bathroom break for the night. I had been having problems with mild slender sickness lately, namely nausea, severe headaches, and extreme paranoia, so I knew he'd be following me again. It kind of, well, I'll, we'll talk about it later. As I stood in the strip between the fence and the next door neighbor's fence and my own front door, I watched Daisy trot off into the dark and then the wait set in. I knew he was watching me, but I couldn't tell from where. I had my back to the street for a few seconds as I tried to pinpoint my observer's position. Then I remembered where I saw him last time. He had stood beneath the street lamp across from my home, which was directly behind me. I turned around to see him there watching me. I froze, just as I had the last time, and uh, bit the inside of my cheek from screaming. My mother was still inside and awake, so I couldn't call out and draw her from safety. I felt my eyes go wide as panic shot through me like a lightning bolt. My muscles coiled, and my heart began racing. I stood like this for maybe five or ten seconds before I blinked. What happened next was a little too much for me to comprehend. In the split second it took me to open my eyes, he had suddenly crossed the street, came into my tiny strip I was standing in and stood only inches from me. In my coiled state, I was mildly surprised after turning this over that I didn't jump backward. Still, there he was, hunched over, face level with mine, the weight of his eyeless gaze had me locked in place, it seemed. I was so scared that I could feel a lump of vomit rising in my throat. I think I tried to move, but I'm not entirely sure. Then it happened. My eyes were drawn to a bit of motion near the lower right of my vision. A pale, thin hand drew up. His icy fingers gazed downward across my face. The feeling was one I could only describe as cold. Mind you, it's April in Tampa, Florida. Uh, What I felt was definitely his fingers, for it was too warm out to be anything else. I closed my eyes tight, expecting to wake, wake up to the sight of the pearly gates. But when I opened them, all I saw was the light across the street. Daisy trot up, trotted up behind me and gave me a small yip, then jumped up on my leg as though hugging me. She did that whenever she was ready to go inside. It was over, just like that. My question now is, why? Why would he want to touch me? He had a perfect opportunity to take me, but he didn't. Why not? Does this touch mean anything? Please, I'm really scared, and I have no clue what's going to happen to me, or worse, to those around me. That is a... So, so, I'll tell you what's weird about the story. First of all, Frank, it, was, that a, was that an excerpt from, from a longer piece? 
It may be, but that's the only excerpt there was. It was just literally like a set of stories and they, that was the, the section that was used for that particular story. I don't know anything because about any follow-up from it or anything like that, what might have happened afterwards. Yeah, because he sort of speaks as if um, he kind of takes some stuff for granted, right? Like that, that we would understand the context. Like, like to me, it's like, why would you, why would you assume that, that this figure... First of all, why would you assume that this figure was Slender Man? That's a that's a that's a preconceived notion, yes. uh, you know. And secondly, that that Slender Man would take you. Like, why why would you why would you think? Oh, I'm so lucky he didn't take me. I mean, I I don't know that I would that would occur to me that this figure would normally take me. Like, where would that come from? That's that's that's, that's a good point because has there has mm. there been like. Uh, rumors of, of people being abducted by a slender man yeah like I, i've never heard of such a thing yeah, i mean I, the part about the a part about sort of the figure kind of moving through you and it feeling icy cold i mean we've all heard that a million times mm. um so that that you wouldn't really need a context for that like you know you would say oh yeah it's that thing again where where the figure kind of moved through and everything became cold yeah but i don't know it's uh it seemed, um, I don't know, it seemed it's an odd story. Yeah, it, it, I, I know what you mean, John. It, does it actually sounded like uh, more firsthand than some of these other stories I've heard. You know, I don't know. To, to it, me, did seem, can... it did seem firsthand, but there is like this huge context that, see, that, that is missing in my mind. It's sort mm, of glaringly yes. absent. Sure. Uh, you know, where... where like where did his preconceived notions come from and where, you know, what does he know? How did he know that it was slender man? You know, like, right. did he even, you know what I mean? Did he even name it a slender man? I mean, yeah, and then he, oh, I know what he said. He said slender sickness, right? Slender yes. sickness. He's like referring to this thing that he thinks is apparently like would be known by everybody. I don't know. It sounds like it's tailored for a forum that discusses slender man. There you go. That's right, Jake. That's exactly right. That's what, that's what I'm, that's yeah, what I'm uh, I mean, driving at. Because the stories that were, you know, I, I searched, it, it was all, it's all meant to be, they were all meant to be Slender Man related stories. So therefore it was in that, in that group of stories. Because it, it originated. Uh, even though it doesn't state that in that one that it's, it, that it is Slender Man specifically, but you know, that's the thing. But. I was having problems with mild slender sickness lately. Mm -hmm. Namely, nausea, severe headaches, and extreme paranoia. So, in other words, this is some common occurrence for this guy. Slender specific sickness. And he talks about his mom being inside. I don't know. So, it sounds like he's a kid. Yeah. But, uh, or young anyway. Yeah, yeah. It is, a, it is a, it's a slightly strange one, I must admit. In terms of strange stories, <laughs> it can be stranger, you know. Interested in the subject matter, but uh, uh, but thanks, John, for that. Um, sure. Does Slender Man still come up on uh, forums and things? I mean, how popular is it, or is he? When you did a Google search for him, there's an awful lot about him. An awful lot, and um, a lot of it goes back. You know, a lot of posts, obviously, about the uh, the, the, the the Minecraft thing and uh, the the memes and how it all kind of like started yeah. off and. And then people saying that they're seeing these things or having really vivid dreams of, the, of him and uh, all that mm. is freaking yeah. people out. I read somewhere about, about dreams. Yeah. A slender man appearing in loads of people's dreams. Wow. Well, I think he's become, a, he's become an urban legend, just like Bigfoot or, yeah. you know, I mean, Dracula or whatever. Like, he's, mm. he has sort of um, permeated our, our consciousness and... You know, then it's sort of, I mean, once that happens, you know, the truth becomes harder to, to, uh, you know, uh, separate from fiction because, uh, and like what's driving is it, is it your ima imagination driving that or is the thing driving your imagination that kind of sort of all blends together, right? I mean, at this point, I, I, just judging from my own children's mania around it, it would be about right that it would be around uh, the end of the aughts or whatever right around nine yeah. or ten or whatever it was yeah, 2009 that it, is uh, yeah date here on the story i was reading yeah so that seems to me about right like that there that it was sort of 
I was hearing about Slender Man every day and kids were going out as, in Halloween as Slender Man. And Slender Man was like, you know, then Slender Man's in, in Minecraft, right? And so like all, Slender Man was all over the place. And now, now when he's referred to, it's almost like when we refer to Dracula or like I said, or the Bigfoot or whatever, he's just part of the, <coughs> part of the you know, whatever our, our myth. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse and me. Also the, uh, the, uh, the chain, those chain messages. The ones where I will like send this to ten people, or, you know, right? Come and get you, or, right? Yeah, yeah. Playing on people's fears. <laughs> John's got um, a, a weird occurrence or strange encounter. I don't actually know what it is yet, so I'm just second guessing as to what this is. But um, let's hear it, John. I'm, I'm we're all intrigued. <laughs> Okay, so um, so back in the day, uh, I had moved down to San Francisco uh, back in the early, early, early 90s. And, um, and I kind of fell in with, uh, my aunt was a huge Grateful Dead fan. And so I fell in with the Grateful Dead and went to a bunch of Grateful Dead shows. And, you know, I would, to this day, consider myself a deadhead. Uh, so the, 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 the band and going to the shows and the culture around it was hugely impactful on me. And, and, um, and I, that, uh, the, on, on, I think it was August, geez, August 8th or something, 95. So anyway, whatever, whatever it was early, early August, maybe that's his birthday, but, um, Jerry died. Uh, Jerry. Yeah. So, so Jerry Garcia. So I'm out on a bike ride, like a long ass bike ride. I, I went out to Tim, uh, you know, um, uh, Tiburon and, uh, you know, from San Francisco and I, you know, huge bike ride. And my, uh, then, uh, girlfriend, uh, called me up and, uh, uh, what did she do? she, te- oh my God, she beeped me. I had a beeper at that point. Isn't that funny? So, so she beeped me. And I pulled my bike over at a gas station and went into the telephone booth and called her. And she said, yeah, Jerry Garcia had died. And I, and it was, you know, that was kind of, that, that shook me, you know, cause, cause it, cause he was an important figure to me. And, uh, I was sitting there for the longest time and, you know, sat down on the curb and just kind of like thought about it for a second. And I remember it was very kind of powerful. And I thought, well, you know, and I kind of started to become inspired. I started to become like thinking like, wow, like, like, um, you can just die, you know, and I was kind of a struggling actor at that point. I'd moved down there to, you know, to, to be an actor. And, and, um, and I was thinking, boy, you know, you got to just kind of get back up on the horse or the bicycle in this case, and, uh, and just keep moving, uh, and move toward your dreams and your goals. And, and it was, you know, it was a very sort of powerful moment for me, sort of his death kind of started to propel me toward that, that thought process. So I swung my leg over my bike and I, and I started moving forward through the, the parking, you know, the, the gas station. And I looked up and there was a guy that looked exactly like Jerry Garcia. He had the same beard. He had the same, he was maybe a little thinner, but still looked just and had a jovial, joyful look in his eyes. And he was smiling. And he was like walking toward me and I was sort of taken aback. I, you know, I'm moving on my bicycle and he's moving past me. And I was like, is this like something supernatural that's happening right now? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And, um, and so then I kind of kept going on my bike and then I went, what just happened? And I looked back and I saw him round the corner around the gas station. And I thought, God, did that just happen? And so I turned my bike around and I went around over to the other side of the gas station where he would have been coming out and he wasn't there. And I looked across the street and there was like a couple of lanes of traffic and highway and stuff or whatever. And I was like, he did not get, it's, it's all open. So he could not have gotten across that way. So I turned my bike around thinking, oh, he must've turned around and gone. He's going, he's now walking back where he came from. And I went around the gas station, wasn't there either. And to this day, I just go, wow, was that like, what happened? Like, did I just see a ghost or because it was so real, like, like seeing him was, was, uh, it wasn't like an apparition or whatever. It was like seeing a person on the street. So anyway, that's my weird story. Blimey, John. 
Yeah. That's pretty strong. Well, John, I can't, I mean, Garst, you know, I can't believe that about Kerry Garcia. It's just, that's, 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 that's uncanny. I mean, and, and I have to say, it's not, it, it, the, the person was not like the spitting image of him per se, you know, it was sort of like a, like, I mean, whatever. It wasn't. It wasn't as if, uh, like, wow, that's Jerry Garcia. Although that, although in all fairness, that is what I thought for a second. Like as he approached me, I completely thought it was him. As he got a little bit closer, well, I don't know. I don't know if I was just questioning what I was looking at or or what. Hard to say. Definitely ganger. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Plus, your mind can play tricks. You just got the news. He he died. I mean, that's huge. I mean, for me, that was like when the night we heard John Lennon got killed. Or yeah, yeah, same you know, thing. Same with me. Cobain for his generation. You know, I mean, it's heavy, heavy shit there. So when something yeah, is that, in your mind, you do tend to notice things related to it more more often. Yeah. It's it's, it's possible. Yeah. It's getting it's, Kind of in, in, in a loose way, getting back to this, the, the Slender Man kind of thing, where something's in your consciousness so much that sometimes you can see things that are not, see things in, in, that are not there, if you know what I mean. See patterns in things that are not there. Right. Well, you can I see could imagine yeah, it you mind. randomly being slotted yeah. into Twin Peaks. Episode. Yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good well, example. It's in, in a very complex thing anyway, but, you know. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, if uh, you know, I certainly felt rocked. You know, I mean, my my headspace was was definitely um, yeah. shaken. You know, I was shaken for sure. Yeah, to be kind of like uh, not to be the Behringer of doubt or whatever Herringer, whatever that word would be. But I mean, you were in San Francisco. I mean, yeah. there's gotta yeah. be. I mean, you know, where are you going to find more deadheads than San Francisco? And, well, you know, and further, furthermore, to your point, I mean, I'm even in Marin County, you know, which is where they all live. You know? Ah, well, yeah. There you go. Anyway, there you go. Because that happens with age, doesn't? It? <laughs> I think it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, think I think it you, does. You reevaluate things when you get older. I think. Yeah. I think we'll go with Jake next. Tell us about this. This, because I'm in the I'm completely bewildered. Just you want to go in first? Because mine's mine's a bit of a long one. I don't really have a story here unless I just come up with something after listening to you, Jake. So I need your inspiration. My <laughs> All right. inspiration. I need a muse. Right. <laughs> well, mine's a, mine's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to have to try and refine it uh, and not get sidetracked because it does link to my life story as a whole. And I have quite a complicated life story and a complicated family. But long story short, I'm, I'm adopted. Um, and this story is about um, my biological father finding me on Facebook in 2013. So, um, so basically, yeah, I was adopted uh, when I was seven and a half due to various complicated circumstances. But um, my biological father hadn't been in my life um, since I was a baby. So I didn't know. I knew his name because I'd been told his name, but I didn't know what he looked like. I had no pictures of him. Uh, I knew nothing about him other than, uh, yeah, he left when I was a baby. Um, so I knew nothing. And, uh, and to me it was, you know, it wasn't a big deal because I had a stepfather for a short time. And then when I was adopted, I have my father now. So I'd never, I, I was never fatherless. So it was never a big deal to me. Sometimes I was a bit curious. I'd Think, I'd wonder, I'd be like, oh, I wonder what he was like. But it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't plan, like, I'd never, like, made any efforts to, to look for him. I thought maybe one day, maybe I might look for him if I get curious. But, you know, it wasn't completely in the back of my mind. Um, so anyway, um, in 2013, that was a bit of a crazy year because um, I was 20 years old and Legally, when you're over 18 and you're adopted, you can actually be in contact with your biological family. So I was in contact with some of my members of my, my biological mother's side. Um, and anyway, so my maternal biological grandfather passed away. And so at his funeral, I, um, I met a lot of my, uh, my uh, biological mother's side family that I hadn't seen in 16 years since I was four. So that was quite an emotional overload and I met my biological mother again for the first time in uh, 
16 years and she um she met my adoptive parents and everything so that was an emotional roller coaster and that really was like a you know mad mad experience for me really crazy um and uh and about two months later yeah um i um i got a message on on facebook but it didn't come through the main inbox i actually i got a friend request from my biological father but i didn't like it was a random ad uh, um like i didn't associate i didn't even though i knew his name because he was in the back of my mind i didn't clock on straight away that that's could be him i just i just saw this oh who's this guy and so i just kind of i didn't decline the request i just uh, ignored it um and then um i was i was sort of browsing through my messages and i don't know if any of you know about the the filtered inbox on facebook no yeah. i don't there's a there's another inbox um it's called filtered and it's where it's where all the spam messages go so if someone who's not on your friends list mess sends you a message it goes to filtered hmm. oh wow and back back in 2013 it was called other now it's called filtered but it was called other back then and um and I'd, lear- I'd learned about it a couple of years before then as well. I'd, I, I'd found this other inbox and I'd seen all these random messages. I was like, ooh, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't give you a notification when you get a message. You literally have to check. It's like a junk, junk inbox. You have to check it to see if something's gone in there. So, and I remember that I had 26 mostly spam messages from group pages and stuff. I had about 26 messages in there um, and every now and again I'd check it and I remember I was just you know browsing through my inbox and then I saw the number on the other inbox had gone up from 26 to 27 I was like oh what random has sent me a message and then I saw the message um <laughs> uh and and then it, it was it was from my biological father and uh and it was something along the lines of oh hey hey this is a uh, this is w- a bit weird for me it's probably weird for you um it should probably be a bit weird for you. It's weird for me. Um, and he said, oh, was your, was your mum Lucy? If so, we could be related. And I instantly, like, it instantly hit me. Holy shit. And this is only two months after, you know, meeting my biological mo- uh, mother for the first time in 16 years. So I was like, I think my first reaction was like, whoa, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, you know, out of the blue on Facebook and at first you know it was like you know is it really him but um deep down I had a feeling yeah it, it must be him and he sent a copy of the birth certificate and everything and I didn't tell anyone for about four days because I was in a lot of shock because it's just completely like turned my world upside down I was not expecting that at all um and uh, and then then I started to sort of stalk his profile a bit and I started to see how oh, he looks he looks a lot like me and and he he has he appeared to have similar interests as me. He posts a lot about like military history and stuff, and he did historical reenacting, which is something I always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And like here he is in in dressed up in like red coat uniforms and everything, doing mm-hmm. historical reenacting. This is this is surreal. And then I'm looking at the pictures of him. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like he really looks like me as well. And it was like, so it took me about. I think about three weeks before I had to sort of like before I got my, myself together and, and wrote a reply to him. Um, and there, yeah. So then basically I accepted his friend's request and started chatting with him and getting to know him. And, uh, and we just hit it off straight away. Like we just became best buddies just like that. Like pretty much straight away. We, we really clicked just making friends with him. And he's not been in my life since I was a baby. It was very, very surreal but anyway over the course as we were getting to know each other my my parents my adoptive parents were very um supportive of me they were very you know they encouraged me to you know to get to know him and everything and um, they were curious as well they were very curious about him um and then i said well he 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 does play he works for cisco but he plays in uh, bands he's a guitarist like on the side just for a hobby um and he used to be in a band when he um, conceived me back in the early nineties. Um, and, uh, yeah. And my mum was said to me, um, Oh, Oh, what band was he? And I was like, Oh, you're not going to, you're not going to know the band. It wasn't a famous band, but she kept asking me. 
And I was like, why does my mum keep asking me what band he was in? And um, she says, oh, I might know it. And I was like, um, I was like, uh, uh, you probably don't because it wasn't famous. But she kept asking me. She said, F- find out what band he was in. Um, and I thought, okay. So I, I was looking through the, I, f- I found out the, the band name. It's called Concrete Gerbil. Quite a, quite a funny name for a band. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so he was in the Concrete, uh, concrete Gerbils. Um, and, and my mum's like, oh, uh, uh, have you got a picture of any of their like, T-shirts? And um, so I looked through his profile and he, and, and he put up some old pictures on his Facebook from the early 90s um, when he was about my, my, well, he's exactly 20 years older than me. So he had me when he was 20. So I saw some old pictures of him when he was 20, when he was in Concrete Gerbil. And, uh, and I found one of the, of the T-shirt, like one where he's wearing the Concrete Gerbil T-shirt. And I said to my mum, I said, look, there it is. That's the, that's the T-shirt. And then she, um, she went in the other room um, and, and then came back into the room holding a concrete gerbil t-shirt. Oh, That's my, my adoptive mother holding a concrete gerbil t-shirt. I was like, I was like, what? Seriously? I was like, how did you get that? And uh, basically, one of my mum's friends um, has a son who was also in that band. And during the, the early 90s, like they used to, my parents used to go round, round uh, her house and her son and all his bandmates, including my biological father, were there. So they got to kind of know the whole band and they bought um, the T-shirt, like just to support the band. And so my mum bought the T-shirt and she'd kept it in a, in a drawer underneath her bed for 20 years. So it was in pristine condition. And yeah, and all of a sudden, I'm like, come to the reality, it's just hit me. It's like, wow, my adoptive parents knew my biological father long before I did. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are the chances of that? Like, that and is, they, yeah. remember, they remember his name, they remember talking to him. And, um, and he remember, he remem- and when I told my biological father, he was, he was in tears because he remembered them as well. Wow, he's he he's actually he said he's so happy that that they were the ones that adopted me. Yeah, that's a great story, Jake. I mean, truly, that is yeah. <laughs> so all so all of these years, they, I mean, they they knew each other, but they, it's not like they were like friends, like in constant communication no, or whatever, no, right? My, so my biological mother, father, he moved he moved to Italy. Uh, he's been he's been living in Italy for about twelve years, so um, he's got a wife there, and now now he's got a, a son. So I've got a half Italian, half brother. Um, they're moving actually. They're moving back to the UK next month actually, because it's a bit it's a bit difficult to, to live in Italy at the moment. So uh, they're moving back. But yeah, so he went off to Italy. So you know, they didn't they weren't like just went their separate ways, but um, they remembered each other. And uh, what's interesting about this story as well is what prompted me to to find out this information so it was my mum asking me constantly oh you know what band was he in because it was my my adoptive dad he had a hunch because he remembered he remembered uh meeting my biological father kevin once um just asking him oh how, how are you like just you know small talk and he was saying oh yeah i'm all right i haven't i haven't seen um my other half brother uh, baby Merlin for a while and he said I haven't even seen uh, baby Jake for a while and um, that, that that sentence just stuck in my, my dad's head for, for years and when they they adopted me and they saw my birth certificate and they saw my name and they saw by the time I was born my dad remembered that line so this is in yeah. 2000 this is in 2000 when I was adopted when I was seven and a half um, and he my dad saw that and he remembered my biological father and saying, Oh, I haven't even seen baby Jake for a while. And he's like, hang on, that was the early nineties. He was born in 92. His father's name. And he, he sort of wondered for a moment. He's like, nah, nah, too much. Yeah. No, nah, I can't be. Um, and then when my biological father found me on Facebook in 2013 and I told him that he remembered that, that thing again. And he's like, hang on. And he was in a band. And so he asked my mum, he's like, you know, you know, find out, get him to find out what, what, uh, what band he was in. 
And uh, yeah, it was it was that band, and it was <laughs> they they knew him. They knew him. Of all the bands, and it's just extraordinary. So now we're like, it's you know, it's like it's like a big, like, like, yeah. small yeah. world. When, so when we, when we met, like it was my first time meeting him in person since I was a baby, and for them, they were just meeting an old friend. And so wow. it's amazing, and we're all one big happy family now. And I've got a baby wow. brother, and you know, and they're moving to the UK next month, so I'll be able to see them more often. So it's, it's, it's an really extraordinary cool. story, though, to lead up to that. Yeah, that's beautiful, Jake. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Do you all get together now? I mean, have you all joined forces or? Oh yeah, I'm sort of reading. Yeah, you're connected. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. One big family now. One big family, and I've nice. met my, you know, uh, another set of grandparents that I, you know, hadn't met before. Wow. That's and I'd lost all of my adoptive grandparents. Um, yeah. Yeah. And now it's it's crazy. It's like it, it's a bit weird. Like I lose my lose one set of grandparents, and then I gain another. It's gain another. Crazy. <laughs> you know, it's crazy life. You know. Yeah. As David Lynch said to me once, uh, yeah, reality is stranger than fiction. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. This is it, it, I actually still can't believe it to this I, day. Like, yeah, you know. that's really heartwarming story. Well. It, 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 yeah, it's more yeah. heartwarming than kind of like, you know, out there. No, I'm so blessed. I mean, it's not something many adoptive people get to experience. Oh, so no. I'm it's really quite, it's lucky quite, it's quite a neat story. To yeah. be able to be yeah. reunited with my bio- biological family and it being happy, you know, no, no hard feelings. That's great. That's, that's the best outcome you could ever hope for. And, and you know, because it doesn't always go that way with me. So it's, also to find that your interests are the same. As I yourself. know that, that, was, uh, that is so, even for both of us, we were <laughs> quite surprised as well. That it's, it's that whole nature versus nurture argument, but yeah. uh, it's actually more, more, there's, it's more, a lot of people think it's all like nurture, but it's, there is a big nature element to it as well. The, yeah, it's, um, we're both absolutely fascinated with military history. We both have pretty much watched every war film that's been out. But yeah, it's, just, it's, in, it's really w- quite strange. I mean, that is a strange aspect of it. That, and, the, and the band bit, the, about the band. Yeah. I mean, what's the chances of them going to see a gig of the same band, you know, who are a relatively unknown band? They're not, you know... Yeah, they were. They were. I think they were only known in the local, the local, yeah, just local, like a local kind of band. Early nineties, but they weren't like, you know, world, world famous. Um, and so yeah, and it was just like you know, my mum's friend's son was in that band. Just you know, they go <laughs> around their house and then just hang out. All the band members will be there, just all casual, you know, and uh, crazy. Yeah, knowing them on a first name basis, just like chatting and everything, and uh, incredible. Lovely story, Jake. Thanks for yeah, sharing that. Absolutely. Thanks. It's quite a personal one as well, but th- thank you. Yeah. It's really nice. Well, we, this is more or less. We're wrap, <laughs> wrapping up now. This is the bit I kind of, kind of happy, sad about really, because um, just to give my two pennies worth about this before anyone else wants to jump in. This has been a real this this series that I've done um, was has really been a labour of love for me. And um, I've always been interested in like these kind of like more questions and answers things, the the unknown world, you know, the strange things that are out there possibly. And it's always it's, it's always intrigued me. That's that's those these things. And I'm learning, even I, even the subjects I picked, I'm still learning about them when I'm searching them and stuff. There's still things I didn't know about them. Um, and uh, so it's it's been really enjoyable to do. And it it's more enjoyable because of the guests I've had, the company I've had that have joined me on it, um, taking time out of their day to spend an hour or so with me, you know, once a month or something. Um, and I know schedules can be tight and uh, things have to be juggled around and we, we get around it some one way or the other, but it can be, you know, quite manic at times. But uh, but I'm very yeah. grateful to all of you. And, and um, to those of you here now, and to those who are absent today that have been on other shows, and I must name check them, to Christoph Sajek Danik, um, to Tammy Baird, um, Adele Jones, and um, Jay Arseng, who have been on on and off. Um, and the mainstays uh, um, that have been, I think, haven't missed one show, which is remarkable, is Jake 
Wardle and John Piricello, even if he just has to dash off. It always seems, you know, he always gives us time. And I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful to you, Stu, for coming in from the second show onwards. So you're you're one of the veterans as well. You've been here pretty much all the way through as well. Um, yeah, and, um, I've certainly done a few of them and not be among this group, you know, as well. So thanks so yeah. much for the opportunity. It's been great getting to know all you guys a little better. Mm, yeah, it's been a nice Thanks, way. Frank, for bringing us all together. I mean, it's it's, it's a nice amazing. way of connecting, in it, but yeah. doing something, you know, as, as a show. But also, it's a social, it's a social connection as well that we may not get yeah. to do any other way. You know, um, if I can just mention this, when Jake, when you were telling your story about being. Um, on the set in March of 2016. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember seeing you there those days, you know, but we didn't know each other. I was, I'm sure, in my woodsman. Oh, you know, yeah, make you were unrecognizable in your Yeah, outfit. but I'm sure you saw us. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. you and James Marshall. I didn't know either one of you. I mean, you both looked like kids to me, to be honest, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, but hey, I mean... I'm glad we're getting to know each other now. And I'll see you in Washington, right? Yeah. In July. Yeah, in July. July and so in a couple well. of months. Would you say that again, please? No, only in a couple of months' time now, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think they said 75 days a few days ago. So. Yeah, I should say um, yeah. end of July, isn't it, I think? Yeah. It's not long, really. That will fly by. Yeah, really. The way this year's going. And, John, you'll be there again, I'm sure, doing karaoke and all of that. Uh, yeah, you bet. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I promised somebody a, a duet, and I can't remember who it was or what the duet's going to be, but I guess I'll, they'll let me know when I get there. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a duet. Time of my life, and you got to do the real medley parts, like, right on, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll uh, I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Frank. Hey, weddings. hey, Frank, it's been a real... It's been a real privilege to be on your show, and and uh, and what a what a wonderful job you've done uh, producing it. It's really uh, something to be. Uh, it's very impressive, and and thanks for including me. Oh, you're very welcome, John. It's been you've been a, you've all been an absolute joy to to work with, really. And I mean, it's not work, of course, but it, 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 to put it together and everything, and to have you all take time to do it and be enthusiastic about it, and and enjoy it, you know, is, um, I couldn't ask for more really, you know, and you've all been wonderful in your own way. That's great. Um, so guys, thank you also. I mean, I, I want to thank the people that listen to these as well. Um, without, you know, you kind of, it's not huge. We don't get a huge strike rate, but, um, I think the ones that do listen to it are very loyal and they keep coming yeah, back for it, and they always try and spread the word on the internet and so on. Yeah. So thank you to all of, all of them, all of you out there, for supporting these shows, and I really appreciate it very much. Um, and it keeps us going, you know. Mm -hmm. Keeps me going. Um, and um, I'm sure I'll see you um, all again in the next series. Hey, guys? That's, well, that's kind of confidential-like. Confidential -like.